Guess what, community? So do you. You gotta look at your body totally different. Woo! 11 1 2016, November the 1st, 2016. Autumn's in the air. The trees are purging and cleansing themselves. It is time for man to do the same thing. Woo! Take a deep breath. Thank you so very much for once again to you all that are tuned in to my real life radio show, Heart to Heart Healthy Living. You know how we do it? We take a deep breath because I like to talk. Even if I'm talking to myself, it makes me more stronger in my knowingness. So if you out there listening, you know how we do it. Set back. Shake it off. It's a conscious self-health care hour. You can look at how you looked at your life through the week. Measure it up with some things I say and see what else you need to work on to continuously help you reach higher ground of consciousness and then you will sustain that ground of consciousness no matter what you will know how to view and that's what this is all about mental observation view is essential for your success because I love sitting back looking at my life and looking at what's being created what has been created because it's all a part of the now moment you know that past that moment here that moment there the future that you're thinking about is all happening right now so we just need to take a moment and make sure that we are aligned with the world that we want to be in the world that we are creating and making sure that we're being that change in that world that we want to see in everybody else so take a moment take a breath feel that breath come all the way up shake them toes shake them hands shake them shoulders stretch it all out feel all good make the noise the noise that you need to make i'm karen khadija davis folks host of my real life radio show heart to heart healthy living founder of the arc of self-healing and self-help I am the one and only conscious self-health care educator. I help you understand what your body symptoms are saying so that you can understand what you're doing. This information will rejuvenate your thoughts, rejuvenate your consciousness to live a stress and disease-free life. And when you do that, God knows you're feeling so good. You have no worries, no concerns. You're not struggling. There's no strife in your life. With conscious self health care moves. Mental observation view is the essential for your success. At any given moment, any situation that you're in, nobody told you you had to jump up, speak, respond, and react right away. React to that right away. Just sit back and take a moment and think about it. Conscious self health care moves. 
So how can I help you? Health education for longevity and peace. Slay your health care fears. And I feel as though when you slay your health care fears, when you honor this divine body that you have, a lot of other things come into balance and come into play that we deal with in the world. So take that deep breath. Call a friend. Tell them heart to heart, healthy living is on. They sitting at home, feeling stuck, feeling stressed, thinking they can't overcome what's going on. I'm going to help you tune into yourself. Yes, this is my real life radio show, and you're tuning in to me. Thank you, but my goal is to help you tune into yourself. So today's show, uh, talking about my life journey, moving from disease care to conscious self health care. I share my journey through my family, through myself, in my upcoming book, Choices. Moving from disease care to conscious self health care. You know that book has been in the making and the remaking since 2013. And that's okay because that's how we do it, you know. It may take that amount of time to get that book out. Last week, you heard me talk about my wonderful, gorgeous sister, Sandra C. Walker, and how my health journey and her health journey collided together and the view that my mother took from that, which is totally different from everybody else's, but we do have to honor individuals in their requests. And so today, I want to honor my brother, Franklin Donnell Davis. And when I decided to honor my brother, good Lord knows family community, all the thoughts came up about all the brothers in the community, men in general, and men in my life. And so uh, University up last night and I, and I wrote something out. I kind of read it this morning, but I just said I was going to go with the flow and I was going to go with it straight the way it came to me. And uh, so I'm going to share that with you momentarily. But again, Take that deep breath. Get ready to relearn, rethink, and rewrite your very own prescription plan for better health, for better living, for a better life. It's in your hands. You got the power. No one else has. We take all this gorgeous information, we match it up to who we are, and we really create our plan. So if you've been following somebody else's plan and somebody else's suggestion and it really hasn't really vibrated within you the way you want it to, this is an opportunity for you to sit back and look because it's a new day. 21st century healthcare has been around for over 100 years, but it's definitely becoming more and more a part of mainstream because when change is needed, the universe is going to change without anybody giving it permission. And people that are in line with that kind of concept and that kind of understanding, their information begins to come up, you know, uproot it, and be available for anybody that's tuned into that vibration. Because nobody is putting anybody in any category. We all vibrate at a, at a different level of frequency. Sometimes we are on the same frequency, and then sometimes we're not. And somebody say, well, you're not on my level of vibration. You, you know, that doesn't mean that you're low. It doesn't mean that you're above. It just means that you're not on the same frequency that they are, and that's okay because you might not want to be. Or you might like what you're hearing, and you may want to be that way. So the main question that I ask people to consider is what I always ask myself. Karen, are you working from a man-made mindset of human consciousness? What has been showing us? And, you know, we define fear on this show, and I'm going to share that with you because I did get some information. But, you know, family community, I've said this for a long time when I had my other friends join me as co-hosts on the show, um, Wanda Whitaker, Rachel Pope, different other people, that my show was really for you. For those individuals that have shifted their consciousness, stepped up out of the dark ages of disease care, they bury disease thinking, and they're looking at correcting their situation a different way. And I share with you the language of cellular ecology that we create. Uh, we have cellular malfunctions due to a self-organizing breakdown and structure, how we think, how we feel about things. And our body uh, shows that reflection. So I hold the space for you to share your wellness stories. See, on this show, that's all I want to do is for you to come on board and share your wellness story like I'm sharing my wellness story with you. When I have guests call in, of course, guests come on, call in, work with them from their platform, from what they're doing. But when you call in, that's all I want. So I kind of went back in time. I kind of went back to when I first came on the radio on WOL, uh, probably around about, 1998, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, I did uh, 13-week shows, 13 shows on a, a year on WOL, and mostly I talked. 
I didn't allow people to call in because I was giving people information on cellular ecology uh, from the International Academy of Lymphology, how the lymphatic system works and how powerful and important that system is. And I was angry at myself and my truth. And so I'm kind of changing my platform a little bit now. So um, I'm not allowing calls to come in. Uh, if you want to share your wellness story with me, I invite you to go to my website, ConsciousSelfCare.com, 1S, Connects Conscious and Self. Click on the link that says Submit Your Wellness Story, and uh, I'll be glad to have you come on to the show. And we can open up the lines if you like uh, for people to ask you questions when you come on and share. And uh, that will be great, but that's what I want to do. So if you want to text me something in, uh, you want to uh, email something to com, you can. If I can read the words, if I can understand it, I'll discuss it. If not, I'll share it on next week's show. So that's what we're doing. So I want you to sit back, take a deep breath, and let me share a moment with you before we take our first um, station break. And um, transcending, transcending. A man-made mindset of human consciousness. Stop the mindset of having to protect your human self-expression and experiences. There is nothing unfamiliar to your soul. Life is a state of consciousness. And where did I get that from? Probably from Reverend Ike when I was about eight years old and all the way up. And anything else it had to do with um, understanding who you are. And then I finally got a hold of a little pamphlet by Emmett Fox. Life is a state of consciousness. And that pamphlet just blew my mind. You know, it's not that many pages. Uh, I came from one of his teachings. But I share that when they come with me. Because as a conscious self-health care educator, when you read that, it'll help you so Life is a state of consciousness. Thoughts follow the state of consciousness. What is the mind aware of at any given moment? Life gives expressions to that state of consciousness, awareness. When you came to planet Earth, in order for you to know yourself, you had to see yourself. And when you saw yourself, you recognized yourself, your soul self, that inner self. And then you had to put a label on it, a face on it, and you gave it a name. You are the light that you say is within you. You are the universe, and the universe is you. I am the universe, and the universe is me. Your perception of your life at any given time is a reflection of your state of consciousness. So you know where you are and what you're giving your power to and how you're responding. And nobody tells you that you have to react right away. Take your time and to consider what is real and what is not. And so, as you know, I'm going through some shifts and some changes in my life <laughs> through the journey of my mother and this daughter that she has that doesn't seem to fit into the mold or the box of the man-made mindset world. I've always been outside that box, and no matter what journey, no matter what avenue I have taken through my whole life, it's always been on this outside, and people always looked in and told my mother, this girl does everything different than everybody else. Well, that's because I vibrate to my true self, and I have no qualms with that, and you shouldn't either. So sit back, take that deep breath. You're rewriting your very own prescription plan, and you're including everything in there to get to where you need to get to. And so some things happened, uh, again, um, because of the way I met with my family. And I felt a little bit emotional coming, coming on a couple of a month ago. But um, soul living is better than man living. Are you still living from a man-made mindset of human consciousness? I make conscious of health care moves, mental observation view, is essential for your success. I share all this on this radio show, my real life radio show. How I move through the greatest hoax played on a human being in love and kindness. Because see, everything I do is in love and kindness. No matter how it looks like and no matter what I may say, it is in love and kindness. So living from the soul of my heart, I wear no mask. I cast no blame and I have no shame in anything that I do. It is what it is. So I cried the other day. My heart is still heavy because my cousins decided that I did not need to know that my aunt, my godmother, had made her transition. I will not be invited to her program, but I tell you what, family, community, and friends, I'm happy that the people that I love the most are no longer here. I do not have to deal with that system of medicine anymore in terms of a loved one. 
now. They cannot take, now they cannot attack my life. My mom, from the moment she left, she keeps saying to me, please, little baby, that's her name for me, stop crying. I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know that they lied to me about you. I didn't understand what I was doing that I asked everybody else to do based on what they said to do. I hear this in my head all the time. And she was very loud in 2014 when things was going on. So energetically speaking, I told my mother, now I can truly stop crying because I am free. Anyone else that I know that make the choice to use that system for the daily care of their human body, for health care, that is on them. Their choice, their decision to volunteer their body. I do not vibrate to diseases or disease care. I honor where you are in your consciousness. If you want to raise it, I'm here. If not, it's okay. If you come, can't do it, change your mind, want to shift, it's all right with me. I'm still here. I'm going to be true to myself. My mom loved having parties. She loved working with her sister friends. She loved giving affairs. My Aunt Helen is my mother's natural-born sister. But she did not live in Washington, D.C. So her closest friends, my Aunt Elaine, my Aunt Shirley, they became my godmothers and my aunt. So now they all have returned to a higher state of love, a higher consciousness. The greatest mental freedom, I'm telling you, family, community, and friends, for me that has truly worked in my life, the greatest mental freedom of it all is truly not caring what anybody else think of you or what they have to say about you. Because I'm telling you, that will trap you up every time if you give your power over to the preacher, to the teacher, to the doctor, to your parents, to your grandparents, to anybody. Your time is your life. You've taken everything they've given you, and you are able to live an independent life. And you shouldn't feel bad about it, and you shouldn't feel like you have to do things that you do not want to do. Time is over with. It's a new day. Elevate humanity, elevate yourself. That is what we all should be doing, and that's how we should all work in peace and harmony and love with each other. A little bit of housekeeping. We had a conversation with Carla Wynn Hall. She is the author of The Soul Code for Women. That book, uh, Kinder Release, should be, uh, I think it's the Amazon release. It's coming up uh, November 20th. She is the creative visionary at The Soulful Pen. Uh, She has a podcast show called Ready, Set, Speak, Pause, Cast, and she has helped to help uh, about 850 women um, publish their stories. And so this time around, she's doing an anthology that she did not have a title for. She allowed individuals to create their own story, and it's under the uh, umbrella of um, 100 Voices. And it's about inspiring, empowering stories. And I'm sharing my story of how I move from disease care to conscious self-health care. And I'm sharing the journey, how my mother's life got entwined in my life, which wasn't appreciated by most people because they live in fear. They live in fear of not taking control of their life, their loved one's life, and they live by the word of the doctor. The doctor don't know it all. The doctor studied disease care. They really didn't study health care. They studied disease care. And so when you feel that way and you think that way, that's the doctor that you go to and you stay in that paradigm. If you want health care, you have to look outside of that system or ask that physician, are they still practicing that way? But if they are toting drugs, pharmaceuticals, surgeries, exploratory surgeries, then you know you, they're still in that man-made mindset of disease care management for people. But you got functional medicine. You have um, physicians responsible for medicine. You have all kinds of avenues that you can take now. So if you're not aware of them, then that's what I share on this show right here. So remember, on November the 20th, you want to support uh, Carla Wynn Hall with her book, uh, so cold for women. She's telling you how to come up with your old story, how to rewrite it for your new story, and live in the now, which is similar to what I do with conscious self health care. We just do it mentally, and she does it through paper and your story. November the 22nd is when 100 Voices, Inspiring Stories will be released uh, on Amazon. And so I'm asking you to support that because that's where my story is in that book. And last but not least, I had Laura Lango on the show. She is a 
a nutritionist. She deals with functional medicine. She had a daughter that had some health challenges, which made her shift her energy from following the standard dietitian, quote, nutrition understanding. And she moved into um, understanding the power of cannabis, marijuana, in which on that show I revealed that I've used marijuana to assist me with my stomach, with my ulcers, with even beginning to actually eat the dead food that I shouldn't be eating because I couldn't even eat that. I had to make myself eat it because the doctor told my mother that your daughter dying of um, nutrition, malnutrition. When I looked good, I looked healthy, but they said I was dying of malnutrition, so I had to find a way to eat. And so um, I used um, cannabis, marijuana, to assist me, to help with the ulcers in my stomach and to help me um, nourish food. And so now, guess what? We all know there's legal now. They call it medical marijuana. And so... Uh, I want to take that course. I want to understand how they broke it down and how they breaking it down. And, and what they want to say is, is not the high part of it. It's the low part of it. And so uh, if you out there and you have a, a, a wellness center and you want to bring cannabis in, I want you to go to the holistic cannabis academy.com check out the information if you decide to do it type in interlight radio type in karen davis folks so i can get some credit to help me pay for my course because that time is here and we need to be a part of that community we've been a part of it for so long they've taken out men from it women from it made it look like it was such a, a dangerous thing for our minds and everything and so we need to be in be, we need to be in that So if you're looking to bring it into your practice, go to HolisticCannabisAcademy.com, click on that link, and put my name, and it'll put Interlight Radio in there, and so I can get that credit. So take a deep breath. (sighs) Honor yourself. Tomorrow we're going to take a station break when you get ready to bring that up. Then I'm going to come in, and I'm going to share the conversation about Franklin L. Davis, my brother. (sighs) Ah. Do you feel lost? Do you feel out of sync? Could it be that you are experiencing electromagnetic sensitivity? Yes, electromagnetic sensitivity. Could man-made frequencies interfere with cellular activity and melatonin production? We are beings of frequency, light, and information, and you are your own experience. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of man-made mindset of human consciousness. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Schedule your Nest Provision Human Body Field Scan with Dr. K. 202-248-7749. Visit the website forsalelife.com. The number 4, C-E-L-L-L-I-F-E. Dot com. Have the courage to expand your horizon and reprogram your cellular activities. Call Dr. K for your 15-minute wellness consultation, 202 
really hate. Communication. Communication. That is the key. How are we communicating with each other? Help. The arc of self-healing and self-help. The arc is you, your body, your physical being, your inner being. Self-help is what you do to help that being because you are in control of that being and how that being operates. It takes a you and you to do anything for this body to move. And as long as you are still here conscious of this body, that's how this body will continue to move. Help, that's what we help each other with, with the information. Help, education for longevity and peace. Information, we know about energy. Energy moves, but how does it move? It moves with information. Yes, that information can seem chaotic at times, but through chaotic information comes the truth sometimes. And sometimes you have to look at your life that way and, and break through and look through that chaos that's in front of you and seeing what's real and what isn't real inside of it. And that's because you're in a state of consciousness to give you opportunity to look at what's being presented to you. Entanglement is real. You know, people's thoughts and their frequencies can entangle in your thoughts and your frequencies, and you may get a little bit of confused and not sure which way it is, but I guarantee you when you become center, you take that breath, you sit back, and just don't react and just respond to things, things will go a lot smoother for you. Consciousness has nothing to do with religion, spirituality, or medicine. It's all about you. So stop living in fear from a man-made mindset of human consciousness. It's time to recognize who you are, honor yourself for who you are, you know? And that's all we can do. You can get well now. Family, community, and friends, you can get well now. You're sitting at home and you've been trying to get well and you wanted wellness and you want to feel better and nothing has changed because the procedures, what you have been doing, has not changed. You've been doing the same thing over and over and over again. They're giving you more medication. They have surgery. They're doing more exploratory surgery on you, cutting on you, burning on you. They don't even have to do that anymore. With the new technologies of MRIs and things like that, they don't have to cut on you to see what's going on in your body, but they still do it because your frequency is there. You are vibrating there. It gives them an opportunity to do that. I'm telling you, there's more and more physicians that is not practicing like the old doctors. They understand, and they all have the fear of being threatened because we're in a new era, a new age of information where it doesn't take you 20 years to find out something that happened yesterday. And that's what's so great about it. And we all have the opportunity to shift. You can get well now and go out and understand about epigenetics. Yeah, you've been hearing it and you're going to keep hearing it because it's freeing. It reveals that genes and germs do not cause diseases your belief do. You believe it in that, you're still holding on to that, and you want the medication to assist you when it's not. You want the over-counter medication to assist you when it's not. It's breaking down the body. The body does not know how to process chemicals like that. So it stays in the body. It turns into all kinds of things that causes like a tsunami of junk in your body. And it's hard for the lymphatic system to do its job. And so you want to learn cellular ecology. You know, and I'm happy and thankful that the, the way I learned cell ecology was from the International Academy of Lymphology, Dr. Samuel C. West. We have to honor him. He brought 63 years of information to the public in the 70s, and now is what, 2000 and something? Information almost 100 years old, that you got Bruce Lipton, you got Jim Oshman, you got so many other people that's now telling you more and more about that information and what it is and how you take responsibility for working your body to clear it up. And you can do that. The pure laws and principles to prepare families to live in peace without pain or disease, these laws help an individual today live in harmony and peace within their skin. As a lymphologist, I teach people or share information with people to take care of them. It is better to teach them than to treat them. So when you want assistance for me, like a treatment or something, I teach you how to treat yourself with the devices that I use. A bioenergetic, bioinformation, wellness specialist. I use the tools from Nest Health. I use their tools to assist you. Quantum Health and Healing. You can see what's going on in your body with the tools that I share with you. With the Max Pulse system, you can look to see what's happening with your nervous system, what's happening with your autonomic nervous system, what's happening with the parasympathetic system, what's happening to the sympathetic system. You can see what's happening with your arteries. You can see what's going on with your heart. You can match yourself up with your peers, which is how they base where you're going to be at in the future if you don't change what you're doing now. So the information I use lets you read it 
let you see it. And through the information that you have, you create your wellness plan. If you want what I do as part of your wellness plan, then it's there for you. If not, you create your wellness plan and I'm not included in it, that's okay. I want to help you relearn, rethink, and rewrite what's best for you. But if you want the top in quantum health and healing, if you want informational medicine, I have that with the Nest Tubes. And you're not going to find that anywhere else right now because they're the first in charting this new course thanks to the work of Peter Frazier as one of those gurus out there that's been working to make life better for everybody else. The doctors of the future, which is what I say I am, will give no medicine, but will interest his patients, clients, students, and the care of the human frame in diet and the cause and prevention of those disease names. That's what Thomas Edison said. Dr. Samuel C. Work is a game changer. Get the book and study in the comfort of your home with me, yeah, me, Karen Khadija Davis, folks, the one and only conscious self-healthcare educator. Then you can become the one and only conscious self-healthcare educator. And there should be a lithologist in every home, in every community. There should be a lithologist teaching cellular ecology. That should be there. So I have a group on Facebook called Lymphatic Wellness. You can join that group. I post in it. And when you decide to purchase a book, you become a part of another group. In that group, I just post information. People join that group, and they haven't made a move yet. When you make your move, get that book, you will start creating the change that you want in your life because that truly is going to teach you the process of how the body works. The life process, the healing process is electrical. It's more electrical than matter. Both of them works. But see, energy moves lymphatics. That's why all the healing arts work. And every healing arts person should be teaching their clients, their students, cellular ecology, their program. Because that empowers you to become independent. And then when you create your wellness plan, you can bring in any healing arts that you want. Because when you're out of sorts, one of those healing arts is going to help you balance your life. Balance your body. Shift your energy. Shift the state of how your cells respond. So they can come back in better. The same way the trees shake off their leaves, and when they come back, they're just as pretty the following year. Your skin, you don't see that it changes. It just looks the same until they say you're beginning to age. And that depends on how well you take care of your body. So the information is there. It has always been available. There have been practitioners that have been sharing this information for years because I know they shared it with me. And when I studied on my own, I appreciate those that didn't tell me where the information came from. But the information came to me, and I promise myself that as an ambassador for love and peace with the Academy of Lithology, that I will share this information, and that is what I'm doing. But it happened to be my passion. It happened to be who I am and how I always care for myself. So to come along and find this information, hell, I was grateful as heck to find something to match me. And so I'm like Dr. West. When Dr. West found out the information and he had the field, he had a career that could have brought him a lot of money, He decided to teach people how to get well on their own, and he did that to the day he died. And I guess I'm the female Dr. West because I'm going to share this information until the day I decide to leave planet Earth. And I want everybody to be able to share that information in their home. The lymphatic system is the purification system of the human body. Get to know it and get healthy. The name of the disease means nothing anymore. The name of the disease means nothing anymore. Every four years, they create a new disease, they create a new epidemic, they create a new virus, they tell you got this, they tell you got that. It's not going to change. They want to keep you in that state of not knowing who you are and not honoring who you are. Bruce Lipton said, disease is a belief system. I said it too. What about you? What about you? Are you ready to leave a man-made mindset of human conscience about health care, how to live life? Are you ready to get out of the box? And when you do, nobody's going to like it. Nobody around you because they haven't done it yet. Are you able to stand firm in where you are and what you know and what you want to express about honoring yourself? Because I am. I do. I remember my mother telling me, girl, do you ever get tired of talking about what you're talking about? No, mother. You don't get tired of talking about what you love and what you do. So I'm not tired of talking about what I love and what I do. It's still new. It's hard for a lot of people to accept it. 
I have other modality skills, and they work, and they're good. They match a lot of other people's, too. But we need a lot of things to assist us, but let it all be the healing art. Let it all be the healing arts, because why? They all move lymphatics. You have to move the lymphatics. The body must purify itself. The organs must purify itself. The cells got to be in the right environment to receive those good nutrients, to receive that information, to be able to create that energy. You know the formula. Oxygen, pumps, electricity, power. You know, W-O-L, information is power. You don't even know how true that is right now. Information is power. And that's why we have informational medicine today. And people don't even understand that. But the same way you don't understand how you get to see your TV, how you get to hear. But you know when it's static on the line, you know how to try to turn that knob to straighten things out. And you got to start doing that for yourself. And you'll feel good. So, you know, I got the call again and said, um, you know, I talked about fear a lot. And I explained what fear is to me to help you. Two definitions for fear. One, to help you correct everything. Fear false education accepted as reality. I got that from Reverend Willie Wilson many, many years ago. I don't even know if he remembers, but the last time I went to Union Temple Baptist Church is where I also took my mother. My mother didn't really go to church, you know, and so as she got older in age, she decided to go, and I took her to Union Temple, and she started going there. I left because I came into my higher state of consciousness, but I got that from him before I left. False education accepted as a reality, or he said false evidence appearing real, either one. And then I came up with the other one, and I probably came up with education, since I'm not educated, as some people want to think I'm not, you know. And so I put that there, because what is education? You have to take it and make it your own, how you see that it fits into your life from that education that you received. How is it going to sustain you and help? But looking through those eyes, you can shake off the feeling, F-E-E-L, of fear that stifles you, that holds you back, that puts you in a state of of blockages and stagnation. Because when you do that, you freeze that water. You freeze the process in your body. The lymphatic system cannot do its job because things become frozen. And that's in a state of mind, a state of consciousness, your thoughts. All those things can become frozen. And what you want to do is what? Awaken resurrection, unfrozen energy, unfreeze that energy. And that's what we do on this show when we talk about conscious self-health care, to unfreeze that energy. I do the same thing for myself. I may can recall some things or somebody can trigger something in my mind that I, I may have given no more thought about, which recently happened since I want to honor my brother. That information came up. So today's topic, black love, black lives, black relationship matters. Black men matter. Black women matter. Black children matter. Life matters. But guess what, family? Humanity matters. We all are God's children. It don't matter what race, creed, or color you are. That light in you is a light in everybody else. And when we start vibrating from that light and supporting each other and stop looking so much outward of what people are doing and how they want to live their life, who they say they are, you know, as long as people are out there doing what? Things decently and in order, we should have nothing to say about it. And so making choices doesn't mean you change who you are. Matter of fact, you ain't got to make a choice if you really don't want to. Take a deep breath. You'll be learning, you'll be thinking, and you'll be writing your very own health care plans. Prince said, that's Prince Nelson Ronger, he said, the cause to everything is freedom. And the effect is choice. Making the right choices for yourself, to seeing if you really do need to make a choice. Sometimes you don't. So, Franklin Donnell Davis, beloved son, brother, father, uncle, friend, My brother, beautiful brother, born January 1973, which was a crucial point in my life. And I'm going to share that on another story. He left this planet December 22nd, 2002. You know, my sister left, I tell you, with you in 2001 last week. So you can see my mother, you know, at that time when she thought she may leave, then she lost her daughter, her oldest daughter. She grew up with, she became a woman with, that she became a mother with. And then her son, violently killed. Her daughter had to play a part in her sister's long life of struggling with her illness. 
that didn't set well with my mother. And then she had to turn around and be who she was, this girl that I am, through my brother. Chip was crime victim number 285. He was shot to death while outside playing with his daughter and the neighborhood children. He was babysitting while their parents went Christmas shopping. Chip was a single father raising his daughter, Tamaya, with the support of his family, mostly me, and my mother and my sister, and his friends. Frank once said during an interview for the Washington Former Viewpoint question, how has positive thinking affected your life? My brother said, I wasn't reared to be a negative thinker. My people always said that if you think and act negatively, you will live and get only negative in your return. So you kind of see that I'm anchored in this from my mother's perspective, my father's perspective. He said, I've lived a much happier, healthier life as a result of my positive outlook on life. And that's how we have always been, but I guess mine was a little bit more differently. A native Washingtonian, one of four children, born to Shirley R. Hardy Davis in Franklin, into this world, January 1973, educated in the D.C. public school system and graduated from Eastern High School. Even made the honor rolls. My mother was always scared that my brother wasn't going to graduate. And I kept telling my mother he's doing it his way. The boy is going to graduate. You always said you got to graduate. Then going to college was a different choice. Go to college, go to work. But he is going to graduate. And then he graduated with honors. She couldn't believe it because she thought he wasn't going to school, but he did it. Frank entered into his eternal rest December 22nd, George Washington Hospital. Franklin was a loving and caring person. He was always respectful to his peers and ready to lend a helping hand. He was devoted to his daughter and family members. He loved sports, basketball most of all. Chip had a good eye for color. While attending Carter Woodson Junior High School, his artistic work was mounted on the marble walls of the United States Department of Education and was praised for having fine artistic ability. During his school years, Chip received many outstanding achievements, awards for music, academic, library skills. He was also a delegate for the DCA North Atlantic Region Conference and participated in other organizations dealing with other youth and activities. Our family has always been a part of doing certain things in the community and supporting in the community. Franklin was a loyal friend, a devoted friend. He encouraged all to get high school diplomas or GEDs. And I'm happy to say that after my brother made his transition, a few people in the community went on and do that. They went on and did that because, see, black on black crime, black lives matter. But see, black on black crime, that means that's another black life. And that black life matters. And one of the things that got my mother kind of twisted was because I couldn't get involved in the court system. That is an unjust system. And even though my brother was killed, I couldn't go there because I knew it was no justice. That was another black boy. He was just caught up in what was going on in the world, and somehow that happened. And I just couldn't be involved in it. And that hurt my mother to her heart because I'm like, I can't be involved in that. Yes, that's my brother. He was 16 years younger than me. I raised him like he was my child. My mother raised my sister to raise me the same way. But time has shifted, and she was like, are oh, you the mother or am I the mother? I'm like, you didn't do that with Pina, with Sandra, when she did things to me. So it was a little bit different, a little bit time. And, and you see, that's a hurtful thing when you lose a child through violence like that. And then it seemed like your family, you know, my sister was gone, so it was only me. My mother already sick, but I could not do that. That was another black life. That was another black boy. Matter of fact, he got out in 2015. My mother made her transition in 2014. I wanted to find out how well he was doing because he got out early. He did 12 years. He was supposed to do life, but he didn't get life. He did 12 years. He got out early. So I want to know how was he doing? What kind of productive citizen was he going to be? Because we have to welcome, as they call now, returning citizens back into the community so we can assist them with no hate in our hearts. What happened, happened. What is, is. And I'm telling you, with consciousness, you put yourself in those states. And my mother would say, how can you say that my brother agreed to something like that? Because I had a higher state of consciousness. My brother talked to me and told me. Matter of fact, I tried to keep him in the house that week. And they're like, what you trying to do? You don't want me to go out? And I couldn't say, well, I'm get, I got this feeling. I don't want you to go. I, well, I had to let it be because that was his choice. But that's who I am. I'm very sensitive. I can feel things. And a lot of people don't like me saying that. They don't like hearing that. And so that was hurtful for my mother, for me not to be there with her, to hold her hand through a justice system, to try to get, you know, them to whatever. It was, it's an unjust system. It doesn't work. And so I would never be on a board. I would never be on a jury. I would never do any of that. That's an unjust system. 
And so black on black lives matter, black lives matter, humanity lives matter. That young man, if I didn't think that because of violence that he's black, I would what? He doesn't matter now. He still matters. It's how we live in this system and what we think about it. But the good thing about it is my brother's life shifted a community because those were friends in a community. And somehow things got off balance because of whomever or whatever. But the thing about it is, is that his transition brought about a peace and harmony in the community, shifted a lot of people's energy. A lot of the brothers went on to get their GED. We went back to school. They married their girlfriends. They started living a better life. So it was a lot of good things that came out of it, you know. And so that kind of hurt my mother, too. This girl is not even supporting her own brother that she says she loves so much. I was supporting him. I was supporting life itself, life in general. So to honor Franklin's inspiring of the life, the arc of self-healing and self-help created and developed a bucket of authentic power for young men ages 6 to, six to 16. And yes, I recruited um, Brother Humam Abdul Malik to help me create some tools to put in this bucket to help young black men to look and visualize life differently, you know, um, he had did 12 years in prison, which I didn't know about at the time, but he came back out and da-da-da-da-da. And I'm going to share that story one day, too. But um, I have this bucket. It now has transmuted into another kind of program to support our young brothers because we got to teach our, our teenagers, our young people now, the universe is mental. Life is about a state of consciousness. Stop reacting to all this stuff that's going on that they want you to react to. Understand health care and what the food is doing to your brain, the, one of the major organs in the body, like the heart. When the brain gets affected by this denatured food and doesn't get what it needs and lymphatic system can't purify the brain, the nervous system gets all out of balance. And once that is out of balance, which is attached to every system, the system starts being out of balance. That's why it's a self-organizing breakdown. And that's why only you can correct it. And that's what I want to do. I want to help you correct that. And so, black love, black relationships, black men, black women, the black human, self-respect, self-love. I'm going to share another conversation about relationships between black man and a black woman and how we um, get so um, lack of communication and entwined and things don't turn out the way we really need to turn out and how we may hold on to these stories and not be able to move and advance ourselves and be carried into different relationships. I've never been a person like that. You know, my mother, when she, my mother always told us that whatever they show you, baby, believe it the first time. They don't get a second chance. My mother wasn't a second chance kind of person. The guy showed her some things that didn't turn out right because you're going to be friends. You're going to date. That's just it before anything else happens. And if that doesn't look good and doesn't look right and you see something, honor that and move on if it ain't what you want. Now, my grandmother loved her dearly. She was a little bit different. She still had that in her, but she would say to me, I would go to her and I would say, Grandma, I'm thinking about not, I'm not doing this uh, with this person or being with this person. And I'm going to leave like my, my husband, Alan. Before I married him, I wasn't going to marry him because he did something. My mother, first thing is when they do something, let him go. But I went to my grandmother. My grandmother said, baby, let me tell you. In any relationship, I don't care, man, woman, child, or whatever you're doing, when your heart and soul is dying and you're giving your life to somebody else, that's when you run. You get out of it because only you can help you, protect you, and save you. That's when you leave. So she said, is your heart and soul dying or do you just feel hurt and pain? Hmm, okay, Grandma, a little bit hurt. But then you ain't ready to leave. So I married my husband. That's how we have to look at life. You don't give your power to people, places, or things. So take a deep breath. You're relearning. You're relighting. I want to honor um, our brothers. I heard this song about Lincoln Bridge um, on one of the shows. It's called Seven Years. And to honor the black man and where you are. Um, Jamal, can you play that? This is America's Got Talent, the semifinals. And here are four singers who have all overcome a lot of tough obstacles. Can they keep the dream alive and make it to the finals? From Louisville, Kentucky, they are Lincoln Bridge. When you're a kid, you think you're invincible. You dream big. Possibilities was endless. The 
sky was the limit. Like, there was nothing that you couldn't do. But growing up in the city of Louisville, you find quickly that that's not reality. When I was seven, I was in foster care, and my uh, mother was in prison. I was allowed a weekly visit with my mother at this facility, and she brought a radio. It was a blue radio. I will never forget. She gave it to me, and that's what I would listen to. I remember just using music to escape. I have a sense of accomplishment right now. If I could talk to the six-year-old me, I would tell him one day all of this will be in the past and you'll look back on this and it would help you. If I could tell that six-year-old that, it would, it would be something, something special. We chose this song that we're singing tonight because it's about the innocence of the child fighting with the harsh edges of life. Sometimes even when you're a grown man, you still have that kid in you that dreams. To be here now, at this point in this competition, if I'm dreaming, I don't want nobody to pinch me to wake me up. Once I was seven years old, my mama told me, go take yourself some friends and you'll be lonely. Once I was seven years old mm -hmm. I always had that dream Like my daddy before me So I started writing songs I started writing stories Something about their glory That always seemed to bore me Cause only those I really love Would ever really know Once I was 20 years old I swore it Cause I know the smallest voices they can make it major I got my boys with me, at least those in favor And if we don't need before I go, I hope I see ya. I can sing them awesome songs and I can tell them stories. Both some of my boys are with me, some are still out seeking glory. And those I had to leave behind, my brother, I'm still sorry. You know, family, community, and friends, we all was a child at one time, and they say that we hold on to those childhood memories in our subconscious mind, which is the female aspect of ourselves, because we are male and female, and the female is a part of manifestation of creation. And so I like to tell people that no matter what went on, no matter what went down, and you are still surviving today, you want to take that child and you by the hand, and you want to bring it to the understanding where you are now, again, you have to raise in vibration. And when I reached a point in my life where I had to reach out to someone, I went to Dr. Francis West Wilson, and she told me straight up that I was responsible for my own being. 
and not to give my power over to any system or anybody else. And so if you truly understand what we want to say as African Americans, as black people, talking about white supremacy and what it did to us, I tell you, honor Dr. Frances Cross Wilson because she said it starts with you loving you. And we have to teach the children to love themselves. And we have to look at the words and language that we're using that we're talking to ourselves with and to each other's with. And if we understand the history of slavery and what happened, how brutal it was, how mind controlling it was, you are free. Just like Prince says, you are free. The cause is freedom. You are free through your own choices and how you want to hold and what you want to hold on to. And seven years, so I like that song right there. You made it. I made it. We are all making it. Take that memory of an abused child around, uprooted, transmuted. Only see your goals and don't believe in failure. Because remember, believe you can, believe you cannot. Either way, you are right. And it starts with health care. And it starts with a state of consciousness. My brother lived a wonderful life. He loved his friends. He was more loyal to them than he was to himself. And when he came into my program is when my brother saw a whole new side of who his sister was. And he understand about loyalty. And before he made his transition in December, he wrote me a letter. And that's how we did. We did chores. We did things for people. So he said, Karen, I'm doing this chore for you. You got 22 hours. What do you want? But I want to let you know that through your program, I learned what loyalty was. I had to be loyal to myself. You have to honor yourself before for you on anybody else. If you give that honor away to somebody else, you're going to live in pain and you're going to live in suffering. You're going to live with struggling. And that's why our brothers use that word struggling. You cannot struggle to empower yourself. You're either empowering yourself or you're struggling. Two thoughts in the mind is going to keep you what? You're not going to be anchored and you're not going to be centered. Understand what they're saying that this food is not food, how they're trying to keep control of your mind, shift your energy, shift your vibration and begin to honor yourself. And our sisters need to do that. We all need to give each other a break and start anew. It's a new time. It's a new vibration. And we can change things because, see, nothing compares to you. Nothing compares to you. That song by Prince that he wrote for the family, for the community that became known through Shanae O'Connor. But it was written by Rogers Nelson because a family, nothing compares to you. No separation, the self from you, nothing compares to you. Nothing comes before something. Nothing comes before something. That's why imagination and imagery works before a thought. That thought comes out of silence. We are taught in the man-made mindset of human consciousness to think through life and manifest through a thought process. It takes you more stages to do that than to just imagine because I'm telling you, intention or not, attention or not, you're going to manifest. So mental observation view is essential for your success. And that's what I like to help you with when you tune into my real life radio show, Heart to Heart Healthy Living. Visit my website, ConsciousSelfCare.com. Look over the links. See how you can get more involved and in understanding about this new field of bioinformation of medicine that expands on energy medicine and know that you are electricity, that you are a light being and that you are not separate from nature, that everything works in unison, that everything is one. Everything, every living being is one. So yes, it is oneness. And when we practice oneness and we honor oneness, we become at a choice point in our life. And that choice point means that you can hold on to that same vibration and you can flip when that time comes and go backwards. Or at that choice point, that fork in the road, you can decide just like nature does and create that window and create something better for yourself. And that's where humanity is right now. That's where the black man is, is where the black woman is, or where the black child is, is where the white man is. Whatever color creed that you want to look at, that's where we all are because we all are connected as one. And yes, in the duality of the world, do what you got to do, but know that you are one and we all are one. Health matters. That's what matters. Life matters. That's what matters. That you have a choice if you want to choose because you have the right not to choose but then a choice. You don't have to choose necessarily because what? The universe is intrinsic. You're going to get what you get anyway and what you give anyway. 
and understand that every time you meet somebody and you're going through something, that is not a reflection of who you are. You know who you are. The only reflection that you see in somebody else is that light being that you don't want to honor. You want to look at the outside covering of it. Pull this skin back and see what you see. You see the same thing in me, the same thing in you. And you see the same thing in nature, patterns, principles, circles, and life. So this week, I want you to take the time to take the view, to set back and look at how you're creating your life and who you're giving your power to and how you can shift out of a chronic disease state of thinking. And when you do that, everything in your life will shift. My cellular malfunctions are cellular malfunctions. I'm a part of why they're there, and it takes me to correct them. Get rid of the stress in your life because that's only you turning against you. That's where that stress comes from. You're trying to reach out and connect with something else and give it, it the power. I ought to know about stress. I've been teaching stress for almost 40 years now and experiencing it myself and evaluating and moving forward within myself. And so there is no stress because I'm not going to turn against myself for anybody. I honor who I am. I love who I am. I respect who I am. And that's just the way it goes. I don't give that power to anyone. And that's why I love my book, Tune Into Yourself Through the Magic of Poetry. Those stories and those poems were given to me through the universe to carry me through these last 16 years of my life that was actually written in 2000 to carry me where I'm going through now because it knew what, what, what I was going to go through with my mother's transition, how things were going to be reviewed and how things was going to be. But I know we all are connected and we work together. So I like to tell people, rise as high as an eagle and then go higher, a higher state higher grounds, consciousness. I'm telling you, know where you want, give your power to no one, and don't struggle in life. And if you're feeling sick and you've been that way for a long time, and when you start cleansing your body, it's going to seem even worse. But know that you are going in the right direction. When the body purifies itself, your life is purified. But when you're purified in consciousness, you get to keep it if you stay in that state of consciousness. So I went up a little bit over today. I'm going to close out with another song by Lincoln Bridge, and it's called Free Bird. So be as free as a bird. Honor yourself, love yourself. Write that plan down. When this come out on YouTube, write your comments down. I'll respond to them, and I'll see you next week. Peace, love, Everything honor Everything inside of us, dude, we're going to put it on that stage. Try, bro. Y'all with me on what? Yeah, yeah. Let's get it right cracking. Get it. Yeah. I'm Echo. Big Rome. I'm Andre. I'm China. And, and we're Lincoln, Lincoln Ridge. Ridge. We've known each other all our lives. Everybody has that same passion, they have that same love for music. We all have a, a rough story. I mean, we all grew up in the worst project complex in the Midwest. We were in a neighborhood where there was gangs. Running from the police, or, you know, you're hearing gunshots, and like growing up in a community where crack just, like they just dropped it out of a plane and it landed in your neighborhood, and it just watching all your friends either get locked up, killed. Uh... When I was six, my mother, she went to prison. And we were sent through homes, foster homes. And I just remember being in a stranger's home and being alienated in a room. And, and all I had was the radio. I don't know, the music is, has been our refuge. I used that to escape. So I didn't fall victim to what's on that corner. Our first audition was absolutely amazing. It was sensational. The Marcus Got Talent is our opportunity to escape the hood and do something incredible with our lives. There's no time for games. This is this is real. This is real. You know what? Your audition was one of my favorite auditions. Yeah. Ah, I agree. Thank you. Yeah, really good. So you've been working hard, the vocals, preparing for this. Are you think you've got a song you're happy with? Absolutely. Okay, listen, best of luck, guys. If I leave here tomorrow Remember me I must be 
Tuning into my real life ready show. Be as free as a bird. Do not chain your consciousness. Rise above it all. You are in control of your life and live by his words and keep a loving heart and a loving mind. And have a good week. See you next week on Heart to Heart Healthy Living. My real life radio show. Energy never dies. Thank you for listening to Heart to Heart Healthy Living. Wow, we had a great time. And thank you for joining us and sharing this radio show with a friend. Now tune back next week, Tuesday. From 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We invite you to visit ConsciousSelfCare.com. C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-E-L-F-Care.com. And join the Conscious Self Healthcare Movement. Health is consciousness and healing is a function of consciousness. You have a God-given right to choose your pathway to health care wellness. I'm Karen Khadija Davis, folks, and tune in next Tuesday, Heart to Heart. Thank you, everybody. Get on. Get on.